All right, so we've gone over this 2D pocket. This is the toolpath that we get. I want to show you something else, this 2D contour that I spoke about earlier. If I wanted to, let me go back and edit this. If I wanted to, I could come up here and check 2D contour. Now, contour toolpath, all it really does is it follows the first shape that you click, which is fine. Only problem with that is when I go to simulate this, you're going to notice it's only going to cut out the triangle. It's going to leave all this other material here that we don't really want there. We can still use this operation to remove that material. We just have to tell the machine that's what we want to do. The way we do that is with our passes tab. We come up down here and we check off roughing passes. And instead of, instead of having number of step overs be one, instead of having our number of step overs be one, we increase that number. That's how many times the tool is going to go around that contour until it reaches the final size. So let's try, let's try three. See what happens. Okay, it's based on the tool path. It, I think I can. Uh, it will cut definitely more material away, but it won't cut all the way through everything. You see, it's going to leave this little bit on the corner here. I don't want that. So let's go back and edit the tool path again. Again, we're in passes and maximum uh, number of step overs. Let's go up to five. It's okay. There, I think it'll get that corner now. This little corner that was kind of stuck out here. So as I watch this simulation go, I can see that the tool is basically following the shape of the contour that I clicked at the beginning, which was that triangle shape. And that's okay. Only problem is it's got to go around five times to do this operation. And it's cutting a whole lot of nothing out here. It's cutting a little bit here and then nothing. And then a little bit more and then nothing. And then a little bit more and then nothing. Well, that's not very efficient. It's not very effective. And it's a massively huge waste of time. So this would not be the optimum operation to remove all that material. I'm going to show you one other thing that we can use. It's called a 2D adaptive. Now an adaptive strategy, actually I'll just redo another one here. A 2D adaptive clearing strategy is used to quickly remove material with a very minimum of lost motion, wasted time, wasted movement uh, by your machine. So. I've selected 2D Adaptive, Adaptive Clearing. I'm going to pick a 3 8 end mill. Under my pocket selections for geometry, I'm going to do the same thing I did with a pocket. Just click here. And then I'll press OK. Notice how I didn't have to mess with any passes. I didn't have to mess with any linking. I didn't really have to mess with anything. So Fusion's going through this, and it's calculating like the most efficient way to remove this material. So let's take a look and see what this looks like when it's simulated. So it's going to go around the outside of the block until the, pot, the right angle's formed, and then it's going to just nibble away at this flat section of the triangle, this hypotenuse of the triangle. Very, very quick and easy to do. Uh, adaptive clearing is mostly used uh, to get the material close to the finished size, and then you'll go back and you'll do another uh, finished contour around this. Uh, it may be a faster uh, feed rate or a faster spindle speed to get a, a better surface finish. So again, this, there's three ways to do the same exact thing. Is one better or worse than the other? Well, it all depends on what you're doing. Uh, it's important that you know the different tool pads so that you can sort of pick the most efficient one. Hopefully this helps with some of this uh, different tool pads and island roughing. I'll get on, I'll go ahead and move on to the uh, to the next block in our cam strategies in just a moment.